Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome to the channel. So, uh, this episode didn't kind of go to the way I thought it was going to be. Uh, so this episode was originally just going to be just the build, uh, or the main build of the aircraft. And after editing it all, it was around about eight minutes and admittedly wasn't massively interesting. Um, it is quite um, relatively straightforward uh, build. So, what I've decided to do, and partly because I'd actually finished the model uh, at this point, so I thought I'd just bong it in to the same episode. Um, so this episode is going to be uh, considerably longer uh, than usual. Um, so we've got quite a bit, obviously, rammed into this one. Um, obviously, it says we've got the build, uh, the main build of it. It's the shorter section of the video. We've got um, some detail that I've done uh, in the canopy. Uh, for me, this part was a quite a large risk um, because it could have gone really badly wrong. Um, I'm going to try and source a new cockpit uh, canopy. Um, but that was quite um, a fun uh, <laughs> little experience. Um, there's a little bit of scratch building going on there as well. Um, so that's, that's also going to be this episode. Um, what have we got? We've also got, uh, obviously, the main paint uh, of the aircraft uh, and uh, some weathering. <laughs> what, what, what more can you ask for? Uh, everything is just in this... Comp well, I say compact episode. It's a longer episode than usual. Um, so, as always, as this is a finish, going to be now a finished build uh, episode. Um, obviously, at the end of the video, we'll put up uh, the slides uh, of uh, the finished uh, model. Uh, so, I'm babbling on as it is. Um, it's quite a long episode, as I've said at least 10 times already. Let's jump into it. So, as you remember from the last episode, we removed uh, the engine bay uh, door, which meant half the uh, lower panel um, was a little bit freestanding. Uh, so, I had to glue that into place, and there is a bit of a seam line that I need to get rid of. Uh, a bit later on but as you can see the engine uh, fits in there uh, quite nicely um, good old bit of a tummy extra thin to, to glue that into place and uh, yeah, we move on to the main fuselage uh, sticking that together now even though I've said before the detail and everything in this model is brilliant however putting the two halves together is a little bit of a uh, bit of fiddling um, as there's only a handful, there's probably barely even a handful, I think there was about two or three uh, locator pins, uh, which made things a little bit difficult trying to, um, you know, marry everything up so it was quite, you know, nice and flush. Fortunately, uh, Messerschmitt, the way they built their aircraft, um, their side, well, the fuselage panels were pretty much one side, uh, you know, panels, so the seam line that runs down the middle means we haven't got to worry about trying to take that out all we have to worry about is making sure that's you know level with the other side of the fuselage but it says there was a few uh, or very little locator pins in so a little bit of masking tape to help us uh, line that up and then again with the Tamiya thin just run that down uh, the middle and uh, get those two halves stuck together Now the, one, the one part of the fuselage I did struggle with was um, the top uh, cowling uh, over the engine. Whatever I did with it, it either stuck quite proudly or there was a bit of a gap uh, within um, the join. Which meant I'd spend quite a large amount of time trying to sand this out. Uh, and also using a large chunk of uh, Tamiya putty just to fill that crack in. Um, it did take me quite a while. Uh, to get rid of this and as you'll see in a moment um, you'll still see it's there um, I got a bit brassed off with it so I moved on uh, carry on with the uh, rest of the build and uh, come back to it a little bit later on so the two halves uh, glued together the cockpit itself fitted pretty much perfectly where it was supposed to fit uh, and as also you can see there the uh, engine bay is um, you know very uh, visible uh, to see and one of those early payoffs uh, there I wasn't quite sure if that was gonna you know work out 
particularly well. The uh, control console uh, is a uh, color photo etched part, um, which is very nicely detailed. Obviously, it's two parts: the dials and uh, the main uh, fascia. To add a little bit more to it, I use some Vallejo uh, gloss uh, to make them uh, bezels, um, you know, look more like they're glass. Um, took a couple of uh, goings over uh, to get them uh, fairly, you know, flush with the, the bezels. And there's a few extra little uh, details uh, to be stuck on there. They were quite small and uh, yeah, they, they took a bit of time to, uh, to get those straight in. So we're moving on to uh, the rear wing assembly. Uh, these were very uh, easy uh, to put together. Again, they are two halves. Um, I think there was one locator pin in there, um, but they married up quite nicely. Um, you know, no major issues there. Um, those tail struts were a little bit of a fettle, um, as again, there was no real uh, locator pins on there either. There's a few uh, extra details to go around. Um, as you can see there, the uh, controls for the uh, rudder there going in. The main wings, again, they fitted quite well. Um, they fitted better at the back than they did the front. As you can see there, they don't quite um, marry up again, uh, flush with the leading edge of the wing. Uh, but a couple of clamps and some glue and a little bit of sanding fix that straight up. Also sticking uh, the top half of the wings on, again they weren't uh, massive, massively flush with the uh, leading edge so there was a little bit of sand in there as well and of course as you see there there's a few extra details to go on as well. And there's always classic uh, bull horns underneath the ailerons which never seem to want to stand up uh, first time so yeah, about six hours later, eventually stick straight up. It's also matched uh, brake lines to go in. Um, these were easily fixed with uh, some super glue. I'll let this dry uh, for a bit before attaching uh, the banding that obviously fixes it to the leg. Um, and again, all just stuck together uh, with super glue. Also got the oil radiator at the front there, which also has some nice uh, etched parts, uh, some honeycomb etched parts for the front and rear. Now we move on to uh, the more interesting part of the build. And this was trying to open up the canopy so we could have the door open. So this was quite a risky maneuver because uh, this could have quite easily gone very, very wrong. So what I've done before, um, actually attacking it with a saw, is very lightly uh, scribed uh, through uh, the panel lines for where the door uh, should be. Uh, going over that a few times, there's a nice uh, groove in there, and then very carefully uh, using the saw to cut those out. Kit also comes uh, with um, masking, which is great, but it doesn't come with any internal. So what I did was, as you can see there, put the um, original uh, masks down with a bit of tracing paper, just literally just run your pencil uh, around uh, the inside of uh, the original uh, masks. And this gives you a fairly good guideline, uh, you know, to cut out. Now what I did just to make sure it was right, because obviously it's on the inside, I um, put it onto some uh, masking sheet and reversed it as obviously Kate is going to be on the inside admittedly um, I didn't obviously do these very well because uh, they come up a little bit short but just cutting some thin uh, strips of masking tape just to fill in uh, any of the gaps uh, that are in there obviously you're better off coming up short than being um, you know, overly large uh, with the masks um, it's easy just to, to build up rather than have to keep taking it out and you know recutting it. I 
which the kit comes with quite a lot of details as I said before and some also nice etched uh, handles that go in and they're easily uh, fitted into place with a little dab of super glue. So this means now we can move on to painting the canopy. I use Vallejo's uh, stone grey uh, with a little bit of white in there just to lighten it slightly uh, and then just picking out all the details uh, with uh, some MIG uh, steel. I then started to add uh, a few extra details. There's an actual, it's not actually a handrail, it's more of a hand rope uh, that runs down the centre of the canopy. Made a few rings uh, using some copper wire, just wrap those around a slightly smaller copper wire uh, into sort of like a spring and then just cut those out and then um, squeeze them together to make a perfect uh, circle. Using a uh, little bit of um, nylon wire for the, for the rope, um, there's a little bit of hanging there, so as you can see I've uh, masked those down for a little bit. And then with a bit of super glue, I just dab that around uh, the areas where it contacts those rings. And then once that's dry, I can remove those uh, bits of masking tape and it should be perfectly set as we see it now. We also decided to scratch build uh, some blinds that go right in the roof, uh, the canopy. And all I used was uh, some tracing paper because it's nice and thin. And basically folded uh, those over, over uh, to make a concertina pattern as you can see there. Poked a couple of little holes in um, and threaded a couple of bits of wire. This was all fixed into the canopy um, with a bit of uh, glue and glaze this dries really really clear so we won't see that um, once we remove uh, the masking uh, later on so before moving to paint we want to put the canopy into place again using glue and glaze this is basically uh, a PVA glue um, and it's great for canopies so obviously if you try and use um, a bit of the poly cement it tends to fog uh, the canopy up this stuff's great and also it's quite easy to remove uh, later on if you, if you need to remove the canopy or any clear parts. Um, and again, very easy to wipe away uh, with a dab of water. Now the fit for the canopy wasn't massively uh, fantastic. It's not the worst admitted that I've had to deal with before. Um, but there was a little bit of uh, messing about, um, you know, holding it for quite a while until it's set into place. So now with that done, we can move on to painting. The wheel wells are used uh, RF uh, green with a, a little bit of uh, white in there to lighten it. And for the main uh, fuse lines, I'm actually using uh, completely new paints that I've never used uh, before. Uh, they're a tacky, or, is that right? A tacker? I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It's one of those two. Um, these paints are absolutely fantastic. They're a really, really nice flat finish. Um, you know, they are, they're really nice, uh, really easy to use. Um, before there you've seen, I used uh, the light blue, which would have been RLM78. And then for the top, um, there's two um, RML79s. Uh, there's an A and there's a B, which is a light sand and dark sand. I mix those two to make this sort of browny orangey colour because um, I wasn't, didn't really like either or as, as their own because generally these were quite the schemes I seen with this one are quite orangey um, so I felt this kind of got to the scheme the way I wanted it to look these green splodges took ages because uh, it was quite uh, humid it was really warm the paint kept on drying up on the um, needle um, even though I thinned it down quite a bit, I had to keep playing with it because it kept on getting a lot of 
um, spider webbing with it and obviously my pressure wasn't also quite right there either. The propeller blades are wooden on these aircraft so I couldn't really do my usual uh, chipping so we used a uh, salt weathering technique. I won't massively go into it because I've done a separate video uh, for that and I've put that into the description um, for you to see uh, whenever. The decals are something I've never used before uh, in the way that these are extremely thin decals. Now this was a bit of an issue with this part as you can see the uh, ripples and crimples in there. I actually tore uh, the one and it folded over in itself and it was completely unrecoverable. So on the opposite side uh, of the aircraft I had to paint uh, the EM, I had to make my own stencils from that. Um, basically I traced over the ones on this side of the aircraft, transferred it onto some masking uh, sheets and then um, you know painted that in. But I'm fixing the decals uh, with some micro set to start with and then once I put all those into place I'll go everything uh, again with micro sole. This will soften the decals a little bit further and get them to recess into all those uh, panels. So the chip in I'll start using uh, with a sponge and I'm using RML 79A as it was the lighter of the colour to give some uh, light surface chipping. We'll then afterwards go over that with um, MIG steel to make that chipping go a little bit deeper. I will eventually do a more detailed video on this process um, hopefully soon. But after that we move on to a wash and I'm using Flory's, uh, sorry, Flory Models uh, Grime. Um, I think I felt this was best suited. It's a clay based wash, doesn't really damage uh, any of your paintwork and just remove it with a little bit of water. I then start adding some uh, sort of like dust accumulation, obviously this aircraft was uh, operating in Libya. I used uh, Vallejo's Buff and slowly working uh, some uh, Vallejo burnt umber in there to darken it and I also used the same uh, for the exhaust stains uh, but what I then started doing was adding uh, black um, which you know you, you start to get that sort of oily residue uh, from the exhaust. Now have you ever wondered what the little holes in the edge of the brass uh, etching sheet? Well these are actually quite good for uh, adding extra little details. So with a warm bit of sprue using a lighter or a candle or whatever just to warm that plastic up jam it through the orifice that you want to be using and you know in the case of this the teardrops which are great for navvies, uh, lights just cut them off with a hobby blade and paint them the right colours. So there we go guys, that's uh, the build, the paint and that canopy uh, detail uh, all done. Uh, so I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed the video so far. Um, so next I'm going to be showing you obviously the finished model. Uh, but I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, if you have, give us a like, comment, good or bad, whichever uh, you feel fit. Um, Obviously, I'll get back to you on those comments uh, either way. Um, if you're new here, please uh, subscribe to the channel. It does mean a lot to me. Um, also, do appreciate you guys that are already uh, subscribed to the channel and following. I do hope you're still uh, enjoying uh, all the content I'm uh, putting out at the moment. Final thing before we go, I've completely forgotten to mention, um, probably, I think, for actually for the entirety of this series, this model actually is going to be uh, going up for sale. It's one of the first ones I've done, um, I've, I've built to sell. Um, so the link for it is obviously going to be on eBay. The link will be down in the description box uh, below. What I will also do is, uh, well, I'm going to say soon as, but whenever this or if this model um, does sell, I will also put that in the description uh, at the bottom that has been sold. So. That's all been done, it's all been said. We'll show you the finished uh, article. As again, 
I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you again soon.